welcome to the and Lauren podcast series, a series that focuses exclusively on patients now referred to as having nano rare mutations. I'm Stan Crook, and I'm the founder, chairman, and CEO of Enlorum. Enlorum is a nonprofit foundation that I initiated in January of 2020. Our mission at Enlorum is to take advantage of the technology we created at Ionis Pharmaceuticals, Anisense Technology, or ASO Technology, to discover, develop, and provide experimental ASO treatments to nanorail patients, and to do that for free for life. In our previous uh, chats, Uh, We discussed the blood, the heart, and the arteries and veins that are components of the cardiovascular system. In today's chat, uh, we'll complete the cardiovascular system by discussing uh, the kidney. The main job of the kidney is to get rid of water-soluble waste. The kidney also plays a critical role in several functions that are necessary for life, along with the heart, the autonomic nervous system, and blood vessels, it helps regulate blood pressure. It plays an essential role in assuring uh, that the acid concentration of blood, which is measured by as pH, is maintained within a very narrow range. And uh, it is essential in managing the sodium, chloride, calcium, and potassium levels in blood And by regulating these ions in blood, there are concentrations in tissues and cells. These ions, along with the hydrogen and OH ions, are called the electrolytes of the body. They're called electrolytes because they're electrical. They have charges. The kidney is also responsible for managing water. Uh, You may think that you manage water by drinking uh, when you're thirsty. But if you think a minute uh, uh, more about how the how important water is in every function in your body, it would be obvious that there has to be a system to constantly assess how much water your body has available and adjust and assure uh, that you have the right amount of, of water in all the right places. Finally, as you know, the level of glucose uh, in your blood is carefully regulated by the pancreas, the liver, and the kidney. So it it is obvious that the kidney must be complex, and it's essential for day-to-day, moment-to-moment management of vital life functions, in addition to its major job of eliminating water-soluble waste. So key point number one, The kidneys eliminate water-soluble waste, but have many other functions essential to life. So now let's talk about eliminating water-soluble waste, the first and most important job of the kidney. You have two lungs, and you have two kidneys, and one heart. And that heart is divided into two halves. Some animals actually have two complete separate hearts. And it's really hard for me to imagine why having one heart seems to be the preferred solution for most mammals, uh, but it is a fact. Blood flows through the, to the kidney through the renal arteries uh, that branch off from the, the largest artery, the descending aorta. The kidneys are just filters. They filter every drop of blood that courses through your body and your blood vessels every second of every day. The rate at which blood is filtered uh, by the kidney can be measured, and it's called the glomerular filtration rate, or GFR. A healthy adult filters about 100 mil of blood every minute of normal life. Why is it called the glomerular filtration rate? Because each of the tiny little filters and there are many, many millions of these filters, is called a glomerulus. A glomerulus is a tuft or little cluster of arterioles and capillaries, the tiniest of the arterial side of of blood vessels. And they look uh, microscopically like a cluster of grapes, the shape. And you might ask, uh, why is this shape and why so many? Well, because you need a large surface area to filter blood 
And the best way to get a large surface area is to have a lot of fillers and then make the filters uh, grape-like as possible because that generates an even larger filtration area. A glomerulus is very simple. It's a rather crude filter. Blood flows into a glomerulus and arterial blood pressure pushes blood against the tiny, thin capillary membrane, which is designed to let pretty much anything in blood that's smaller than a small protein, say 10,000 Daltons, remember Daltons are a measure of size of a protein, be pushed through that capillary membrane or that filter. So small peptides like insulin, vasopressin, are allowed through the capillary membrane or the filter, but larger proteins are retained in blood. Why retain blood proteins rather than filter them? Because uh, the body has invested a lot of energy to make these complex molecules, and of course they have important functions, the body wants to conserve them. But once they're degraded by the enzymes designed to do that, then the smaller peptides and amino acids that can be produced from these proteins can be recycled to make other proteins and other cells, or they can be eliminated in urine. Uh, now that they're a lot smaller and can be filtered by these filters which have a sort of limit of filtration of, say, 10,000 Daltons. Key point number two, every drop of blood is filtered. Every drop of blood is filtered every minute of every day of your life. These tiny filters are called glomeruli, and, and, and they are designed to assure uh, that proteins and other large molecules are retained in blood while the smaller water-soluble materials can pass through the filter and eventually either be reabsorbed by other parts of the kidney or eliminated in urine. It's a very simple but highly effective system, and were it not that, obviously, uh, you'd have a hard time living. So now, let's focus on the blood and then what is left after uh, the proteins and other large materials are, that are in blood are not passed through the filter and uh, the other materials are. Okay, so the liquid that goes through a filter, whether it's your filter for your coffee or your tea or the filter on your car, uh, that material that flows through the filter is called a filtrate. The coffee that you drink is actually a filtrate of the ground and the grounds and other stuff are trapped on the filter. The urine you excrete is a filtrate then. A lot has to happen to that initial filtrate that passes through the glomerulus before it could become urine. Once filtered, the liquid flows into tiny little pipes or tubules um, and they're called tubules because they're tiny. But you can think of them as just little sewers or little tiny sewers that are carrying this filtrate out toward the bathroom. The first tubule is called the proximal convoluted tubule. It's proximal. That means it's close to the filter, the glomerulus. So really, it's just a simple way of saying the next thing that the filtrate encounters is this little tube called the proximal convoluted tubule. It's called convoluted because it is. It's very curly-cued. And once again, what that does is create a very large surface area for that tubule. All the important electrolytes and glucose are resorbed. So it's pretty inefficient, really. Your filter is crude, and it allows all that stuff to pass through. And then the very next thing that the kidney does is say, oh, wait a minute, we don't really want to lose all that stuff, so let us recollect it. It is crude, but it works. The recollection or reabsorption of electrolytes like sodium, calcium, chloride, and so on, and glucose is a very active process. It takes a lot of energy, and therefore the kidney uses a great deal of energy. We'll come back and talk about that. The resorption of glucose is a vital function of the kidney. In fact, almost all the glucose that is filtered by the kidney 
is resorbed. So every minute of every day, you're filtering tons of blood. The first thing you do is resorb the glucose that you just passed through the filter. The resorption process for glucose, of course, uses energy. And the energy is provided by breaking down a high energy molecule called ATP. The ATP is used by a specific protein receptor. And that receptor is called the sodium glucose cotransporter receptor 2, or SGL2. And it's located in the proximal convoluted tubule. Okay, so what does sodium glucose cotransporter actually mean? It means that this protein co-transports, that is glucose and sodium. It trades glucose for sodium. There are two of them and therefore it's called SGLT2. Turns out that the SGLT2 form is located mostly in the kidney. And you probably are familiar with some new drugs that are called SGLT2 inhibitors to treat patients with diabetes by getting rid of more glucose in their urine. Of even more importance from a minute to minute kind of basis is the maintenance of the concentration of hydrogen ion, pH, and other ions like sodium, potassium, calcium, chloride, and the like. And don't forget bicarbonate. So chloride and bicarbonate are negatively charged. Hydroxyl is negatively charged. Hydrogen, calcium, potassium, and another, other sort of minerals are positively charged. And it's vital that the pH, that is the balance between acid and base, or positively charged ions and negatively charged ions in blood, be maintained within a very narrow, narrow range. Now remember that pH is a log scale. So a change of 7.4, which is the standard sort of pH you want in blood, a change from 7.4 to 7.3 is actually a tenfold change. And even that from change acutely from 7.4 to 7.3 can be fatal. The maintenance of the pH in your blood is truly a minute-by-minute life-and-death process. It's also important to have a balance between positively charged and and negatively charged ions. That's just another way of saying you have to maintain the pH. You don't want a lot of hydrogen ions because the pH will vary a lot more with hydrogen. And so you use a balance between the positive and negative charges to be sure that you have the right balance of charge in your blood. Not just the right pH, but the right balance of charge. Is that, uh, I hope that makes sense to you. You must have a precise level of hydrogen and ne- positively in charge and negatively charged ions, and you must have the exact right pH in your blood. Uh, and so the kidney then plays this incredibly important role of balancing each and every one of these things. Um, um, to assure that your body has the right amount of all of these things. Let's just say you eat a lot of salt. Uh, I happen to like salt. That's too bad, but I do. And the salt that you eat is just so much that the kidney can't resorb it. Well, that happens. And what happens with a lot of salt-eating people is that they accumulate salt over time, and that is a key factor that leads to high blood pressure. And that's why all the diets recommend low salt. And especially when you have high blood pressure, you really want to limit your salt because you'd like to have your blood pressure not be high because it's bad for you. So what about things like calcium, potassium, iron, magnesium? All these things are essential for life. And so every one of these has to be constantly resorbed by the kidney. And there are other processes that assure that cells have the right amount of these as well. And so the kidney is the first line of defense to assure that you have the right amount of pH and you have the right amount of all these other important ions. So key point number three, the filter passes a fluid through it. That's called a filtrate. That then is passed to these little tubes that are called proximal, near, the filter, convoluted, 
curly Q tubules, the proximal convoluted tubule. And that little hunk of tube is responsible for using energy to manage, to assure that you have an optimal level of hydrogen, hydroxide, all these other ions, um, glucose, and, uh, and a variety of other substances. So in that little tiny area of the kidney, you're, turning, you're using a ton of ATP to generate the energy to do all this work. The kidney uses a lot of energy to maintain the balance in, in salts and pH that you need to stay alive. Now, the filtrate then, after all of this takes place, moves to the next piece, the next part of the tube, and of course it's called distal, meaning that it's farther from the kidney than proximal, and so it's called the distal tubule. Eventually it flows into this wonderful little apparatus called the loop of Henle, which is just a loop of a tube that dips down into the center of the kidney. And as it gets closer to the center of, of the kidney, the concentration of salt increases. And so it's a loop for a reason. And they are responsible then, these loops of Henle, and you have one for every uh, glomerulus, are responsible to assure that the right amount of water is retained or cleared, depending on whether you have excess water or not. Think about this loop of Henle like a deionizer. It just takes the the water that may have a very high concentration of salt in it or a very low concentration of salt, and then by this uh, process of moving up and down into the in and out of the center of the kidney, it balances all it all out uh, using ATP once again to assure that the filtrate that then becomes urine has the right amount of water. And, the, and water that has solutes, uh, the amount of solute in that water is, is called osmolality. And you want your urine to have an osmolality in the 275 to 300 milliosms range. If it's very dilute, that means you're clearing a lot of water. And if it's very concentrated, that means you may be in the desert and you're trying to preserve all the water that you can or you have a problem with your kidneys. In the brain, a special hormone called vasopressin is made, and it's a peptide, uh, and it's small enough then to be filtered, but it also is delivered via some blood vessels. That peptide hormone is then secreted, and its job is to control water. How much water is absorbed, resorbed by the kidney, how much passes in urine, and so it is your your miliosmo uh, regulator. It looks at what's going on and says, "I like the osmolality of this urine. Let's 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 just stay at this level." Or it says, "Hey, I I, I need to retain some water, and so we'll do this." Or I need to get rid of some water, and we'll do that. Now we know that the kidney is responsible for getting rid of water soluble waste. It's responsible for managing electrolytes. It's responsible for managing glucose. And it's responsible for managing water. Those are all important moment-by-moment functions. Key point number four, the kidney is responsible for assuring you have the right amount of things in your blood. They call Those call are solutes like sodium, potassium, chloride, and the like. And that you have the right pH. And that you have the right amount of water. Big jobs, all of them requiring lots of energy. And Lorem is a nonprofit committed to discovering and providing personalized experimental treatments for free for life to patients with genetic diseases that affect 1 to 30 patients worldwide, referred to by and Lorem as nano rare. Many of these patients progress and die without ever achieving a diagnosis. This is where Enlorum comes in. They do the impossible by providing hope and for those that they can help, free lifetime treatment. For more information about Enlorum or today's episode, visit enlorum.org. Any questions can be sent into podcast at enlorum.org. Search Enlorum on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook to connect with us. 
Please rate and review the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen. This truly helps us climb the charts and allows others to find the show. This podcast is hosted by Dr. Stan Crook. Our videographer is John Magnuson of Mighty One Productions. Our producers are John Magnuson and Kira Deneen of DNA Today. Thank you for listening.